Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the Red Letter series. Today, we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 16, and we want to pick up at verse 24, where Jesus says unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, if any woman will come after me, if any boy will come after me, if any girl will come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Now notice one thing here, friends. Jesus has not been to Calvary yet. He has not been to the cross but the people that he's talking to, the Jewish people of his day, are very aware of what a cross is. When they traveled from city to city, the Roman Empire would hang criminals upon these crosses as a proclamation to all those looking upon the penalty for violating the Roman rule. And so they were aware of the suffering. They were aware of the death. They were aware of the misery and pain, both to those upon the cross and those who are being left behind, family members and friends. And yet Jesus says, if you want to come after me, if you want to be my disciple, you must take up your cross and follow me. In other words, you must take up your way of suffering. You must take up your hardship. You must take up your mockery, your pain, your ridicule, your misery, and follow me. My way, says Jesus, is not the way of the world. You are not here to pursue success, fame, fortune, popularity. Your way, my way, is to be the one of suffering, the one of misery. And so we must ask ourselves today, friends, in a world of prosperity, do we suffer for the Lord Jesus? Are we sacrificing on his behalf? I mean, let it be noted here. Jesus preached against material possessions and money more than any other topic that he talked about. And if it is so important for him to relay that message time after time after time, are we listening? Do we truly understand the danger that these things bring to us as his people, as his followers. And so he says, take up your cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Do you recall Paul saying, I crucify my flesh daily? So even though Jesus is implying here a physical death, even more than that, this is a daily death that we incur, that we place upon ourselves by dying to the things, the pleasures, the wants, the desires, the lusts of this world and pursuing godliness, holiness, righteousness, the way of the master. And so we must pause here and contemplate what that means. To pursue godliness means to forsake prosperity. To pursue holiness means to forsake material possessions. To pursue these things means to resist the way of the world. That's what Jesus is simply saying. If you'll recall in the book of Luke, chapter 14, Jesus says, Which of you, intending to build a tower, in verse 28, will not sit down first, and count the cost, whether he have sufficient funds to finish it. Verse 29, lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. Now Jesus is relaying a simple story of what it would take to build a house properly in the spiritual life, correlating it to the spiritual life. Why would you tell others that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus? Then you start to understand what the cost really is. And because you cannot pay that price, 
you turn and you go back to the way of the world. You backslide. And all those around you mock you for doing so. They say things like, see, I knew it was just jailhouse religion. I knew that it wasn't going to last very long. And they begin to mock you, ridicule you, and you become embarrassed by it. And the reason is, is you did not sit down and count the cost from the very beginning. And even more so, your pastors, your Sunday school teachers, the Christian leaders in the community that you are in are not telling you what the cost is. Everybody wants to be happy and go lucky. Everybody wants to paint you such a rosy picture of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Those messages like Joel Osteen. But that's not what the Bible teaches, friends. The Bible, well, look, let's continue and see what it says. If you'll back up in verse 26, Jesus continues the same message that we're having in our text today. He says, if any man come to me and hate not his father and hate not his mother and hate not his wife and his children, his brothers and sisters, even his very own life, he cannot be my disciple. You see, whosoever do not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Then he goes into the story of building the tower or building the house. And in verse 33, he says, so likewise, the same as it is with this story that I've just told you, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. You see, if we truly understood the enemy of the soul that riches and possessions were, we would throw them out as poison. But we compromise. We make excuse for having and buying such things. And friends, I'm guilty as well. But we must be aware of the danger that lies therein. And that's the message that Jesus is trying to communicate. He says back in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life, for my sake, says Jesus, shall find it. What have you given up lately for the sake of Jesus, in the name of Jesus? Something that you could enjoy, something that you could participate, but you're sacrificing it in this life for the reward to come. That's what Jesus is saying. In verse 26, he says, What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works or according to his sacrifices. Now, friends, we're all grown adults. There are many things that we can do. There are choices. We can go down to the liquor store right now, and we can buy all the liquor, all the beer that we want, for many of us, we could go down to the local pot shop and we could get all the pot that we want. If it's not legalized in your state, you could go to some dealer and buy pot or crack or heroin. You could go down to the local bar and you could pick up some woman or two or three, bring them home and have a great time with them. You could go down to the local 7-Eleven or Mini Mart and buy the latest piece of pornography, sit at home and entertain yourself. You could go to your closest casino and spend hours catering to your flesh. But friends, these are the things that we are to sacrifice in this life. And even more than that, you may enjoy rock and roll. Look, I grew up listening to rock and roll. ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne, Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin. That was the music of choice for me. But I sacrificed those things for the sake of Jesus, for the reward to come. You may be a country music fan. You may be a rap music fan. Jesus is saying you are to sacrifice these things. Whether you like them or not, it doesn't matter. Sacrifice them for the sake of Jesus. You might be a sports fan, football, baseball, soccer, NASCAR. Look, friends, I used to travel with NASCAR. I love NASCAR, but I sacrifice these things on behalf of Jesus for the sake of Jesus. I drive a nail in my flesh. I pay the price. I sacrifice these things. I count the cost because I'm looking forward to the reward to come. You see, we have a misunderstanding of what sacrifice is. 
You can't sacrifice heroin if you've never done heroin. But you can sacrifice steak if you're a steak lover. Sacrifice means giving up something that you love, something that you enjoy, something that you take pleasure in. And you may wake up every day wanting it, your flesh, but your spirit says, no, I'm not going to do that. And so you keep your flesh in check. That's what Jesus is saying here. And look again at verse 27. He says, I will come in the glory of my Father with all of the angels, and then I will reward every man according to his sacrifices. And so, friends, you must ask yourself this simple question. What treasure are you laying up in heaven? If you have grandiose thoughts of the place of heaven, the kingdom of heaven, when you arrive, what's going to be waiting for you, it depends upon what you're doing here, friends. It depends on the sacrifice you're making in your time, in your work, in your money, in your possessions, in your enjoyments, in your entertainments. These are the ways that you lay up treasure in heaven. And that's the message of Jesus here, friend. Now, those around you may not understand. They may even mock you and ridicule you for the sacrifices that you're making. But you're not making them for their sake. You're not making them for your sake. You're making them for the sake of Jesus. You want to share, maybe in the smallest way possible, in his suffering. And so, friend, I'll ask you again today, what have you lately sacrificed for the sake of your Lord, of your master, of King Jesus? Well, if it hasn't been much, today can be the start of a whole new life for you, friends. Because here's the beauty in this. Just as physical laws apply to all people at all times, in other words, if you don't believe in the law of gravity, climb up on your house and jump off. By the time you hit the ground, you will be a believer. And it's the same way, friends. Spiritual laws work the same way. doesn't matter who you are. If you apply them, they will return reward to you. And so the more you give up in this life physically, the more you gain spiritually. I can't explain it. And even when it happens to you, you're not going to understand it. All you're going to know is that I gave it up and look at the way my eyes have been opened. Look at the enlightenment I'm walking in. Look at the peace I'm experiencing. Look at the joy that is within my heart. I've tested it, friends. I know that it's true, and so can you, but you must be the one that pays the cost. Turn off that football game on Sunday afternoon. Open up your Bible and read an entire book of the Bible all the way through in the same time you would have watched that football game. Give up something you love for the sake of Jesus and watch what he does for you. Well, friends, I love you. I am so grateful again that you are here for the word of God. And I truly pray that it's having its effect in your life. Now, as he wills and until next time, friends, I truly love you and I'll see you on the next video.